Oh, hi, I'm John Sheska, the author of The True Story of the Three Little Pigs, which I'm gonna talk a little bit about today and also give you some of the secrets behind the scene about how to write books, how to read books, uh, and how to get a great library like this. You know, I think my favorite part of creating a picture book um, is when it's done. <laughs> It's it's such a long process. Um, and I came to it from first studying to be a writer and then teaching elementary school. So all of that was kind of in my background. But what I really do is I just start with the voice of the story. I start reading it out loud almost to myself. So the fun thing is when I get to finally bring that thing to a live audience and I get to read it to a bunch of kids. Cause it's almost like a stand-up act. You kind of like fix it. I did a lot of that with um, Three Little Pigs cause it was the very first book that I wrote. I came back to the school I taught in and would read to kids. And just to see like, is this getting through to them? Is it still, is it funny? Is it hitting all the right beats? Um, and, that, and that's how it became the story it is. I just whittled it down to just like the perfect pitch by a wolf telling what happened. Oh, I've done a ton of books with Lane Smith. I mean, starting with this one, this was my first book. Um, and it kind of spoiled me for collaborating with an artist because Lane and I share like a, a similar sense of humor. We find the same things funny the same kind of artwork, the same kind of cartoons. And, and it's just so great that I got to just tell this story right from Al Wolf's mouth and then to hand it off to Lane. And that's another piece of picture book collaboration where if you're the writer, you're just making a part of the story. And then the exciting thing is someone else does just as much work to bring it to life. I didn't know what a wolf should look like. I kind of knew his voice. But man, Lane showed me this guy and I thought, this is nice. He's kind of a sweet looking guy, but you could see things might not go so well. <laughs> I think the defining job of my career was being an elementary school teacher. Starting with a school in New York City, it was called the Day School then, it's now the Trevor Day School. My dad was a principal. Um, I used to be in first grade. <laughs> I was a little bit clueless back then, but I went into first grade and that's where I found my audience. They were just much shorter than I ever thought, but every bit is crazy and funny. And I started telling them the same kind of stories I was writing for like adults. And it was just wild, kind of strange, odd stories. I would tell them like Franz Kafka, I said, you don't know this guy, but you should check him out. He wrote this story called The Metamorphosis. It's about a guy who wakes up and he's a bug. And all my first graders were like, oh yeah, that could happen. I started Guys Read as a literacy initiative just to reach more boys and get them reading. I uh, came out of my experience as being one of six boys in a family of six boys. Some of us were readers, some of us weren't. Um, and then teaching school for 10 years. I taught from first to eighth grade. And I just noticed like a lot of my boys weren't really crazy about reading. Um, and I just, the science behind it is kind of fascinating. It's that boys develop more slowly then they're a little less likely to do something they don't want to do. It's a lot of social pressure. So part of it is just connecting boys with reading in a way that makes sense to them. I think the way I became a reader, and I think one way that we can connect with boys is how we connect with anyone who wants to be a reader is to match that kid with what they want to read. I mean, and that's what booksellers, librarians, and teachers are all about, is, is making that connection. I think the one thing I always want kids to take away from when they read my books, I love when a kid comes up and says, oh, I can do that.
It's my favorite reaction. And I had kids say that more than once, which is so much fun because it's just like, oh yeah, you can do that. You could write your story down. You can write a fairy tale from a different point of view. Uh, the other reaction I love from kids is I, I want them to just enjoy what they're reading. Like to say, that was just crazy. That was so much fun. Um, I want to read it again, or I will read it again, or I'll read it to somebody else. And then the third level is probably that thing to get kids thinking. Uh, for the true story of three pigs in particular, like that's a great one where your first reaction is like, oh man, that's funny. What's the wolf doing telling his story? And then the more you think about it, you thought, oh yeah, what if, what if you hear from a different point of view? That's kind of like the deepest message. But I love to sort of bury those things deeply. So it's the thing that comes out of kids. It's not me telling them, uh, you know what? You should consider other people's point of view. That's, that's just like too heavy handed. This is a much better way. Like have the wolf just say, I didn't do it. It wasn't my fault. I was making a cake, blew down a few houses, ate a few pigs. Not my problem. <laughs> wow. So that's more than anyone needs to know about John Cheska. But now that you got it, you're in charge. Get out there, do some reading, do some writing. Make a library like this.